I welcome you tonight to the fourth night of our program, Thriving in the New Normal. Indeed, the world is different from what we used to know. In the words of a great African writer, Chinu Achebe, things fall apart and the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. Coronavirus has changed our lives from what used to be normal. So now a new normal? I don't know how normal that is. But I want you to know that with God on your side, and with faith in your heart, you will thrive, you will bloom, and you will blossom no matter what is happening in the world. I want to thank you today for joining. And our message will be coming from Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 34. Matthew 6, 31 to 34. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat and what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow uh, will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 32 to 34. I want to look especially at verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And from there I bring to you tonight the message I've entitled, First Things First. First things first. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bow before you, O oh God, because we need you. We need to hear your word that will make us bloom and blossom and thrive and shine and arise even in the situations all around us. For you have promised abundant life to those who trust in you. And we can find it even in the circumstances that we are in. So Lord, open our minds, open our ears, open our understanding to behold wondrous things from your word. I pray and I plead in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. First thing first. Uh, allow me to make this proposition to you. That first things must be the first thing. Or you will get all other things wrong. Even if you make the first thing to be the second thing or the third thing in the scheme of things, you'll get everything wrong. You know, it, it, it's like when you button your coat incorrectly. If you get the first button wrong, all the others will line up according to that misplaced first button. In the same way, when you get the first things wrong in your life, everything cannot be right. And so it is true what you have had to keep the main thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Did you hear that? The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Lockdown or no lockdown. Stimulus package or not. Recession or not. Keep God first. It says seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. I love the way Ezra Benson puts it. When you put God first. All other things fall in their proper place or they drop out of your life. Our love of the Lord will govern the claims of our affection, the demands of our time, the interest we pursue, and the order of our priorities. So it is important to get the first 
things first. To know what matters the most in life. Otherwise, you will never matter. <laughs> I read, you know, the illustration from the book Mysterious Island by Jules Verne. He, he, he wrote about five men that had escaped prison by hijacking a hot hair balloon. The wind blew the balloon over the ocean. And after much time, the balloon began to drop towards the water until it was just above the surface of the water. And they were like, we're about to die, we're about to drown. So they thought, what do we do? They began to get rid of excess weight in the balloon. They threw it overboard, the non-essential, even their shoes, the coat, the weapons. And then as they threw things away, the balloon rose slightly higher. They threw more things away, and the balloon rose higher. It was like, well, they threw their food away. It's better to live in and be hungry than to die with a full stomach, they felt. As soon as they have thrown all they could throw away, even the basket they were standing on, they were able to just hang on to the rope. It walked. The balloon went higher and moved beyond the ocean until they landed a minute or so right in an island that was safe for them. What do we learn from that story? It is that as long as you surround yourself with things that are not essential, you will sink to death. To survive, you must get your priorities right in life. And the first priority is to put God first and seek his kingdom first. And his righteousness, someday soon, you will be rising higher and higher when Jesus comes unstoppably. And so today, how do I keep first things first in my life? How do I keep fasting first during this new normal? How do I thrive where the Lord has put me? How do I bloom where I've been planted? How do I keep fasting first, you ask? Well, I'll tell you a few quick things. Number one, stop focusing on yourself. Stop building your own kingdom. Instead, participate in in God's kingdom building. Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Oh, I love this verse. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, ends up thinking more of self than God. That person ignores who God is and what God is doing. And God isn't pleased at being ignored. Romans 8, 7 and 8 from the message. It is important that you know that the world does not revolve around you. If you have been living your life with I, me, myself, to thrive in the new normal, God says put first in first and God must be number one in your life. Esau had that problem of self. He, 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 he was all about him and here and now. When you read about him in Genesis 25, 34, he, he, he despised his birthright for just some bread and went to stew. He ate and drank, got up and left. Oh, the world of Esau was about himself. That was why he could not last. Esau ate his future. Esau drank his destiny. Esau despised his heritage. Esau shunned his position in God and despised him the inheritance God had laid for him. Esau lost his legacy and expended his destiny. Esau mortgage his life and shunned his privilege. Esau sold his rights and distended the trophy. Esau swallowed his ownership and derided his diamond and glopped his gold. Esau consumed his seed and excreted his harvest.
harvest before it was sown. Esau spent his youthful energy on non-entities. That's what happens when you don't keep God first and you think taking care of me is number one. You got it all wrong. May I suggest also that your purpose in life is to build God's kingdom and promote righteousness. When you are busy helping others to prepare for his kingdom, when you are busy helping your family to be ready for God's kingdom, when you are busy showing righteousness, leading people into righteousness, you will find out that you are thriving. Oh, I came across the story of a woman somewhere in Mississippi. She made news because she was tired of living, found no purpose in her life, and decided to jump from the wharf to commit suicide. She was about to jump into the water. There was a young man who saw her leap. This young man forgot that he does not know how to swim. He jumped inside the water attempting to save a drowning woman. Forgot about himself. He himself immediately began to sink. Now, this is interesting. That woman... Who wanted to commit suicide in the first instance? Forgot all about our problems and our reason for dying. And she now saved our savior by pulling him to the shore. <laughs> and she told reporters, in that moment in her life, she had purpose for the first time. She had something to live for. In saving someone else, she saved herself. Did you get that? In saving someone else, she saved herself. During this time that we're living, get busy trying to help someone else find Jesus. Get busy trying to impact upon another the grace of God. That's why God created you to save others. Francis of Assisi put it right. For it is in giving that we receive. I challenge you. Give your strength. Give thought. Give deeds. Give wealth. Give tears. Give thyself. Give. Give. Be always giving. Who gives not is not living. The more you give, the more you live. And by the way, Raise your family to be kingdom-minded because your purpose in life is to build God's kingdom and promote righteousness beginning from your family. Joshua said it right in Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Moses had reminded the folks in Deuteronomy 6, 7, you shall teach them diligently. To your children that's the law of God and you shall talk to them when you sit in the house and, 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 and when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up always presenting them as children of the kingdom and be intentional that's, there's some of you listening to me today I know the times have been difficult and some if you've not lost job you've had to work a little more so you can still be okay uh, things are stretching. And you think the family can wait. And I read about uh, Charles Francis Adams, a 19th century politician and diplomat. One day he went fishing with his son. And then his son, Brooke Adams, who kept a diary. This is what he wrote. I went fishing with my father today. The most wonderful day of my life. The father was impacting him. But the father, on the other hand, wrote in his own diary, I went fishing with my son today. What a day wasted. Why do you think that the time you spend with those who love you the most is a wasted time? That's not from God. 
if there is anything that needs to happen during this season, is to drive home the essence of the kingdom into your family. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'm here to remind you, keep the first things first. Let the first things be first. First things first. One of the ways this must happen is to rearrange your finances for the building of God's kingdom and righteousness. Let me tell you a virus that is worse than the coronavirus. Do you want to know? It has been around for a long time. It has killed more millions than the millions that have lost their lives to coronavirus. Are you ready for it? Stingy virus. What did I call it? Stingy virus. And don't we have it sometimes? Someone here is being diagnosed as you hear the word of God today with a stingy virus. It's about to kill you. History records that there were 11 millionaires on the Titanic the night she sank. One of the few millionaires who survived was Major Putin. It is recorded that he left 300,000 US dollars of his money and jewelry and securities in a box in the cabin when he went to a place of escape. And this is what he said, and I quote, Money seemed a mockery at that time. I picked up three oranges instead. <laughs> if you don't know already, Money is a fickle friend. I must ask you today. Are you making a living? Or you are making a life? Many of you are only making a living. You are not making a life. The promise of Jesus to you. Are you with me today? Is abundant life. Come on, say it with me. Abundant life. I didn't hear you. Abundant life. That's the intention of Jesus for you. And how do you have it? By keeping God first in your finances. Keeping God first in the arrangement of your life. Letting your finances build the kingdom of God. Paul writes correctly in 1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19. Do good. Be rich in good deeds. And be generous and willing to share. In this way, you will lay up treasures for themselves as a foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. First Timothy 6, 18 and 19. This is important. You must invest in the kingdom of God. Keep God first in your finances. Let your finances Help in building the kingdom of God here on earth and preparing God's people for the kingdom of God. Oh, I love the way it is rendered in Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up treasures on earth. Moth and rust can destroy them and thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, store up for your treasures in heaven. Did you hear that? Store up your treasures where? In heaven, where moats and rust cannot destroy them and thieves cannot break in and steal them. Your heart will always be where your treasure is. Now, I wonder sometimes why God will make this arrangement. I thought your treasure will be where your heart is. No. Your heart will follow where you put your treasure. So when you put your treasure in the kingdom building, your heart will follow to us the kingdom of God. Come and say amen. I also love the way it is put in by Jesus himself replying in Matthew 19, 28 and 29. Matthew 19, 28, 29. Jesus said, yes, you have followed me 
and in the recreation in the world with the Son of Man will rule gloriously. You will, who have followed me will also rule. Anyone who sacrifices home and family and fields, whatever, because of me, will get it back a hundred times over. Not to mention the considerable bonus of eternal life. I love the way Message, message Bible puts this. I want you to know that nothing is really yours until you share it. I said nothing is really yours until you share it. I came across a proverb that I've loved. Spend and God will send. Come on, you got to tell somebody that. Come on now, come on now. Spend and God will what? Send. There's another one I hope you have had. The hand that gives gathers. Oh, you got to tell somebody that too. The hand that what? Gives. Does what? Gathers. It is important for you to participate in kingdom building the way I will know where you are going, whether it is heaven or the other place, is to see the log in your checkbook or to see where your money has been going by looking at your credit card or your bank account. Then we'll know where you're going. I know, I know you have a good position in the church. But where your money is going is where you're going. I know you're very active for God talking with mouth. Yeah, I know. But where your money is going is where you're going. So ask your neighbor, where is your money going? Where are your treasures going? Tell them that's where you're going to. <laughs> that's where you're going. Jesus said it. Oh, Prophet Agai was stronger in the way he puts it in Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, verses 5, 6, 7, and 9. I love this. He said, give careful thought to your ways. And that's what God is saying to someone today. You have planted much. You have harvested little. You eat, but there is not enough. You drink, but you are never full. You have put on clothes, but you are not warm. You earn wages only put, to put them in purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have much. But see, it turns to little. What you brought home, God blows away. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. But please, keep first things first. I didn't hear you. First things first. Never get enslaved to your possessions. So are you a slave to things? Then maybe you are like that rich young ruler in Matthew 19, 20 to 22. Who wanted to know how to be saved? Jesus said, you know what? Go, go part ways with what you have and give to the poor and, and then you have treasure in heaven. And then follow me. And the young man, verse 22 says, he went away sadly because of his many possessions. I want you to know that for many, what you have is possessing you rather than you possessing what you have. That's a sad commentary. Paul puts it in Romans 6.16. Do you not know that you are slaves to whoever you obey? Are you slaves to the almighty dollar? Let me suggest to you as we close tonight. To keep a heavenly bank account. Did you hear that? Keep a heavenly what? Bank account. Tell someone beside you. Keep a what? Heavenly bank account. How do you do that? So, someone told me there are two marks of a good Christian. Two marks. Do you want to know? Giving and forgiving. Two marks of a serious Christian. What's the first one? Giving. And the second one is what? Forgiving. You're correct. You are never more like God than when you give. God so loved the world that he gave. So to keep first things first, you must keep God first. And your finances must go in kingdom building. Open heavenly bank account. What goes in there? When you return your tithe, God is noting it in your bank account. Of course, you know 
that the Bible encourages us to bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing such that there will not be room enough to receive it. God has promised, Isaiah says, to satisfy your soul in a time of drought. It means God will satisfy your soul in a time of coronavirus. God wants to satisfy your soul in a time of lockdown. God wants to say even when the economy is locked down, your finances will not be locked down. Can I hear a loud amen from someone who believes the word of God? If you are going to keep a heavenly bank account, give generous offering. When you return tight, all you do is you are returning what was never yours. You are a thief if you don't. But when you don't return generous offering, you are a thief too. How do I know? Malachi 3.8. Will a man rob God? Say yes. How? In tithes? Is that all? An offering. Generosity begins with offering. Tithe is something you return. It never was yours. You're not supposed to get a thank you for returning tithe. When you do offering, yeah. And many are growing to give as much offering as tithe or at least half. The best time to be generous is in a time of drought. How do I know? Ask people who did it. And you will see how God blessed. Didn't you read of the widow of Zarephath? Had only the last meal for herself and the son. And gave to the prophet of God. And never lacked during a season of lack. The Shunammite woman had had a lack all her life. She gave to the man of God. <laughs> And, and, and provided for the man of God a place to stay. And what happened? What she had lacked for years into old age, God gave. When you give offering, it provokes heaven to open. As you hear me today, heaven opens for you. I said heaven opens for you. How do you put money in the heavenly bank account? When you give to the gospel. When you give to the gospel. And that's what we just read. You know, Jesus saying, when, when you give to the gospel, there's a blessing for you that is ceaseless, Jesus says. That heaven opens. That's what you do. When you give to the prophet, we just give an example here. Giving to the prophet. In fact, Jesus says it also in Matthew 10, 42 to 42. He will receive, you receives me, he receives, you know, and then he says, he receives a prophet in the name of the prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. He will receive the righteous man in the name of a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And he goes on. Give to the prophet. Give to the poor and needy. We've read about that. Proverbs 20, 28 tells us in 27, Isaiah 58 tells us, be generous, give to the poor. Anyone who gives to the poor is giving to God, and God owes that person. Did you get that? I've learned that the way to have yet, even during the time of lack, is to support the gospel of God and give to the needy. Give first fruit. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with first fruits of all your increase, and then your burn will be filled with plenty. That's the promise of God. Give sacrificially like Solomon gave in 2 Chronicles. He gave like no one had given before and God blessed him like no one had blessed him before. I say again, the best time to be faithful to God in giving and putting him first is during a crisis like this. I love this passion proverb. What I kept, I lost. What I spent, I had. What I give, I have. Don't put limits on my God. When the disciples are told all night and caught no fish, but at the obedience of Jesus, they caught much more than their net could bring in. At the time when there was nothing, when you obey, all of a sudden, there is supply in abundance. Just a little boy with a lunch fed thousands of people. That is what happened in a time when there is not enough, when you make God first, heaven tears open on your behalf. Hallelujah. If you are here today and you are limiting God because you are looking at your pocket, you're looking at your bank balance, read 
Psalm 78, verse 41. Again and again, they tempted God. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. Some of you hearing me today, some of you are like a flint. You know the flint, like a stone? You got to hammer it to get anything out of it. And what do you get? Chips and sparks. Some of you listen to me. You are like a sponge. You got to squeeze it and squeeze it to get anything out of it. You know? But some are like honeycomb. They just overflow of their sweetness. And that's how God is in conclusion today. I challenge you. Make God first in your life. Do not find yourself running the race like human beings run it. Trying to make sure you have stored up things here on earth. Enough for this, enough for that. Put God first. And God will put you first in his arrangement. He will bless you that you will thrive in the new normal. Many years ago, there were two paddle boats that left Menses going down Mississippi River to New Orleans. And they each had a lot of um, goods that they were carrying to deliver at their station. And going separate ways, they didn't know each other. But somehow, young sailors paddling entered a competition. Whose boat can go faster? Now, meanwhile, they had enough fuel to get to their destination. But you know, when you go fast, you burn more fuel, right? So they entered a race. And started running a race, nobody gave them to run. And there was this boat that was lacking behind of the two. And the sailors like, man, we, we, we cannot be beaten here, man. We cannot be beaten. They looked at the gauge and saw that their, their, their fuel was going down. No more coal to, to put in there. So what did they say? You know, let's throw in the cargo that we are supposed to go deliver where we're going. Let's put it in the engine and see if it's going to burn. So they tossed it in the boiler and it became like a fuel and they were able to go fast. They got fast and they won that race. They got to where they were going ahead of the other competition. But they are burnt off all the cargo that they were to deliver. I ask you today, when you think you're going first, you have burnt away eternal life. You have burnt away your health. You have burnt away your family. What have you gained? What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The only way to not end up that way is to make God and his kingdom first. Today, you have a decision to make. Are you ready? To make God first. You are stewards. You are not owners of your life and your time. Are you ready to say Jesus. I surrender to you. Jesus. I'm willing to make you first in my life. I'm willing to make kingdom building. My number one priority. I'm rearranging my finances this year. So that God is ever first. His kingdom is first. If that's your decision. Bow your head right now. Lord, I have not been faithful, and you know it. But today, I want to be faithful. Maybe I've given tight, but I've been a thief when it comes to offering. I'm changing today. I've not given to the needy. I think it's their fault. Let them die if they want. Maybe I've not helped the gospel. I've not helped people who are lost to find the way. Forgive me. Are you praying? If that's you today, just say, Jesus, I surrender. Amen. Father in heaven, until you are forced, we will always be lost. So we choose today to make you forced in our lives, forced in our finances, your kingdom forced in our priorities, righteousness forced, Lord, above all. This is our decision today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. If you have been moved today to make a decision of surrender and let God turn your life around into obedience, I want you to go on 
impactindiana.tv. Impactindiana.tv. Make that link and let us know your decision. We want to pray with you. We want to help you. If you're watching on YouTube, click that link. You see it in the chat. Same on Facebook. And you'll see a number showing on the screen right now. You can text that number. We'll pray with you. We'll answer your question. Until we see you again, I want you to know that God loves you. And so do we. Keep thriving in life abundance, even in the new normal. Amen. Praise the Lord.